Let me share with you how I study my Bible. Now, obviously there's so many different ways to do this, but this is what works for me. So to begin with, I went through and marked every single chapter in the New and Old Testament. The Old Testament is all in yellow and the New Testament is all in different colors. Going to show you Philippians because it's my favorite book in the Bible. But basically, I know this looks super confusing and my handwriting is ridiculous. But if you're anything like me, I'm not the kind of person that can read something once and instantly absorb it. I like to read things a couple of times until I actually grasp what they're about. And there was two things that helped me do that when it came to the Bible. The first thing was simply Googling um, Bible study on Philippians and finding one from a literal kid's Sunday school. I know it sounds so pathetic, but it helped a lot and I'll show you how. And the second one is a website called Bible Ref, which you can literally put in absolutely any Bible verse and it'll explain it to you in like, the simplest way possible. So like I said, I would start by literally writing um, Philippians Bible verse for kids <laughs> into Google. And I would find what the big idea is. If you don't know what the big idea is, you didn't go to Sunday school, but basically it would give you the quickest summary ever on what the book of Philippians is about. So this one says following Jesus is about progress, not perfection, which if you've read Philippians, you'll know that's exactly what it's about. It then goes on to say God's big story and just basically gives you like a little summary and a timeline. That's the first thing that I do. Then at least I have some context. I know what year I'm in. I know who wrote this. I know what to look out for, right? This is what I do next. If I was to come across something that I didn't quite understand, I would look at the Bible verse. This one is what chapter are we in? Philippians 3 verse 12. I would go to BibleRef.com and I would look up that verse and it will literally give me a small summary of what it's about. And then as you can see on the side of my Bible, I'll go and make notes about like simple terms, what that Bible verse meant. You'll see, I also have these little tabs up here. And that is for if I see something that relates to anxiety, so this one's saying Philippians 4 verse 6 relates to anxiety, I'll put a little tab there so that way if I'm ever feeling anxious, I can go to my Bible, find a verse, and it'll hopefully, you know, restore me to peace. And honestly, that is what I do. And I make my way throughout the whole Bible. So I hope this helps at least a little bit. As a baby Christian, I was always relying on feelings. I was like, God, where are you? I can't feel you. I can't feel your presence. Girl, what this truth say? You are not alone. He did not abandon you. That's just how you're feeling. Our feelings are not always truth. So remember that next time you're feeling alone. best Bible study tips for beginners. First, start with the book of John. It's the easiest out of the four gospels to read and it will give you a really good foundation of salvation. Now, before you start reading, make sure you pray first, invite the Holy Spirit, and ask God for revelation. Start by reading a chapter a day of John. And as you read, just circle, underline, highlight anything that stands out that you might want to come back to. Next, make sure you understand what you just read by either looking at the Bible Project on YouTube and searching John, Book of John, and watch their video where they have an animated video that's really easy to understand of what you just read, it's a recap. Or you can go to the Enduring Word Commentary 
and read through what they have to say about the book of John and make sure that you didn't miss anything and go back and fill in your notes in the margins or in your journal of anything you might have missed that would help you understand what you just read. And then finally, I would do something like the SOAP method, which I did a video on in this playlist, but basically it just helps you write down your observations, how you're going to apply the scripture to your life, and it allows you to finish with prayer using the scripture you just read. So journal um, using that SOAP method. Hopefully that helps. Just repeat that every day until you finish the book of John. If you need suggestions on study Bibles, I'm going to put that in the caption below. that I didn't really understood when I was a baby Christian in a way was oh God told me to do this God told me to do that and you know I heard God say this I heard God God was asking me to do this and that and I'm like in the back of my head I'm like how did you guys actually hear God say that to you and it didn't really make sense to me because I thought it was like an, an actual audible voice speaking to them and it would only happen to like those um, leaders or like pastors basically like people who were really deep in their faith already and have already grown so much in their faith so I'm like I don't think that's possible for me because I I feel far from God, right? I, I didn't I didn't have those kind of things, but let me tell you what it's actually not an audible voice. Um, I thought that might be the case too. I mean, probably for some because you know God is miraculous; nothing's impossible for God, and he he used to do that before. But most of the times now in in the the modern day age, I don't even know what term to use, but basically like today how it works is god usually speaks to you through your thoughts and you know one of the one of the funniest things about this is it wouldn't make sense sometimes you know like like for example like letting go of a job that entirely blesses you and you just suddenly get this random thought that oh you should quit this usually that's like an instruction from god and how you would how you would know basically that it is an instruction from god is if it like aligns to his like overall will over your life you know he wouldn't he like if you if you get a thought that s says like oh kill that person or you know do murder or whatever it's not gonna be from god because that doesn't align with his like general will for for all of us Another thing that you could confirm it is through the Bible. You know, when you're reading God's word, suddenly like this line all of a sudden stood out to you and, and you connected that line to this thought that you had in your head or that instruction that you had in your head like a few days back. And, you know, that's usually a sign too. And one of the, one of the things that you could do to actually really, really confirm it is to speak through your leaders. You know, your leaders have this like anointing in them they're 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 appointed to be your leader for a reason because they could see things that you could probably not see from your own perspective the lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit Christian, I didn't realize you could talk to Jesus all day. I thought it was just when you ate and went to bed. No, 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 no. It's a whole conversation. So now every time someone makes me mad, I'm like, Lord, you better get a hold of that child. Or if I have a great day, I'm like, God, you are so good to me. You know, it's like this whole thing all day long. I love it. This video is for baby Christians. Let me tell you this. Your first stages with God is going to be hard. You're going to feel like, oh, when is this going to end? You're going to fall. You're going to get up again. You're going to fall. You're going to get up again. I feel like baby Christians should be educated on what to expect when they come to Christ. Because sometimes they experience so much, they don't know what to do. And then they end up backsliding. Come here. Let me tell you something. Your relationship with God, you will learn new things that you never knew before. Things like discipline. Discipline is one of the hardest things you have to cultivate as a baby Christian. You will learn the painful art of disciplining your flesh that is not an easy process as well but guess what as long as you don't give up 
the finish line is not far. I'm talking of the finish line for you to cross from baby Christian to intermediate. Now, listen. Discipline is one of the things you will learn and consistency and those things take so much out of you. So expect during your Christian walk to fall into a season where you're constantly struggling. But when you get to a point, you will be filled with joy. As long as you never give up, you'll be fine. Now, that phase of struggling, God is trying to teach you and change so much about you. It doesn't mean you should give up. It doesn't mean he's absent. He is teaching. He is removing so much. Do you know what it means to live in sin and then come to Christ? Nah, it's not easy. It's like a transition period. A lot of things are happening inside you. So don't get angry at yourself for falling. Instead, what you should do is focus on growing. Focus on getting back up. You're going to have moments when you struggle with intrusive thoughts. You're going to have moments where you feel like you're not being genuine enough for God. You're going to have moments when you feel like there's more to be done. But there's no more to be done than you not giving up on prayer and Bible study. That's all you need to do. You're going to, Satan is going to make you feel like you're not genuine enough. But as long as you know in your heart that you love God and you truly want to seek him, that's fine. You're going to have lots of struggles with things like secular music and some certain sins that beset you. But please be aware that this is not because you are less, but God is teaching you how to overcome. So don't give up on your process of becoming a warrior. Do you listen? Listen. You will struggle a lot. You will have moments when you don't want to read your Bible. But I encourage you to discipline yourself. Open that Bible and ask the Holy Spirit to read. You can always read the book of John. It always gets you in the mood for Bible study. John is, a, is an anointed book. Please understand that God doesn't want you lukewarm, but please understand that God loves you beyond how you see yourself. You remember, God sees you in the future and what he is doing in your life, not what you're doing now. So even when you have those struggles in the presence of God, never leave the presence of God. Outside is where you find sin. So stay grounded in the presence of God, worshiping him with music and fasting as often as you can. God bless you. Slash get ready with me. Also, these are things for everyone, regardless if you're a new believer or not. The first one is literally just to thank God every single morning. As soon as you wake up in the morning, your first thought should be, thank you, Jesus. I know it sounds really weird, but I promise it's really helpful. It honestly just really helps start off your day on the right foot. And to be thankful for things that we usually take for granted. The second one is kind of hard if you're like me, but waking up early to read your Bible really makes the biggest difference. I use these two for skincare. One thing that's really helped me is getting devotionals. Like Jesus Listens by Sarah Young is a really good one. Especially if you struggle with prayer and knowing how to pray. Even if that means waking up like 30 minutes earlier, I promise it's worth it. The third one is to cut out secular music. You'd honestly be surprised to see how much music affects you mentally. I promise, even if you just cut it out for a week, you will feel a difference mentally and spiritually. This is the Sephora Collection Concealer and Rare Beauty Blush in the shade Happy. The fourth one is to treat prayer more like you're having a conversation with your best friend. Meaning, instead of only praying like at night or in the morning, talk to God more throughout the day, like even if it's just about little things. Like I will literally be talking to God about what I should wear, like what should I wear, what should I do with my hair, like anything and i know it sounds kind of weird but i promise you won't regret it for brows i'm using elf brow lift the fifth one is to do affirmations based on bible verses stick them to your mirror like this and read them out loud every single morning it could be any bible verse you want i promise if you try these for a week you won't regret it